Hello everyone and welcome back to my JNSQ series in Kerbal Space Program 1.7.3. In this episode we're going to try and rescue that Kerbal that was in a really high orbit that we couldn't get to previously and also hopefully send that Kerbal on a flyby of the moon. Uh, so I'm using the Hermes capsule, the smaller one for only one Kerbal, right, that we have tested before, though not to the moon, right? There is a question about whether its heat shield can deal with a return from the moon. And, well, good thing we're not using a Kerbal we're particularly attached to then. So, we've got this heat shield that is meant for this capsule, but we don't know whether... Uh, uh, let me click on it there. See, Hermes heat shield. Hermes personal re-entry capsule. We will see whether it is suited for a moon re-entry or not. Does it say anything, because I'm nervous about this, does it say anything in particular about it not being... Uh, a place underneath before adding an engine does not include a fairing. Doesn't say anything about not good for the moon. Um, none of these say anything about whether they're good for the moon or not. So, there we are. Uh, so B-top, the Kerbal in high orbit, is just going to have to deal with that. Uh, I've added a much larger service module. Of course, last time we didn't even have a service module, but I wanted to guarantee a possible return. Uh, if we take a look at the vacuum delta here, V here, 661 should be enough to ensure a return from that orbit even if the Agena fails. And we've even uh, turned the ant engines such that they should go through the center of mass. I'm looking at the blue axis. Uh, I guess it was alright. Uh, okay, anyway. So yes, we have that. Of course, the supply is 30 days worth, just like we had before. So we're keeping that consistent. And no, I want you on the center node. Okay. And then, of course, we have the Agena, but things are changed a little bit. First of all, we added this antenna. And uh, that antenna is this one. It is not combinable, but it can reach 64,000 kilometers, which should be all we need. And um, so that this spacecraft can handle communications like that. Uh, not a really high max speed on the transmission, but all we have as far as that's concerned is we've got a mite experiment in here. And um, oh, uh, somebody had been asking about the pressurization and the CO2 scrubbing. So if the pod is properly configured for Kerbalism already, then it should already have the pressure control system and scrubber here. If it's not, it might not be Kerbalism ready. For instance, uh, the Dragon capsule that I myself made does not have the pressure control and the scrubber in there, in there yet. It has to be uh, configured especially for that. So without these systems, it's not going to have CO2 scrubbing or the pressure control. Um, you can change what systems are in here. For instance, you can have two pressure controls, a monoprop, monoprop oxygen fuel cell, but of course we just really want the scrubber and the pressure control system, so aside from that, uh, for pressure control you need nitrogen, so make sure about that. Otherwise you don't need anything, uh, you don't need like lithium hydroxide for the, for the CO2 at least. There's a regenerative scrubber, which is a thing. So yeah, the Agena has additional experiments. Instead of using those two whip antennas, we now have this communication dish which uh, should be able to do more data transmission. It has a higher capacity for that. We've added into this uh, telemetry response thing a site, which is like the upgraded mite, if you will. It, uh, it takes a lot more space. So of course we've given more data capacity. We've also added to counterbalance that antenna We've got the magnetometer here, we've got a new ion trap, and we've got a film camera. So we've got some nice experiments there. Otherwise, uh, same solar panel arrangement and everything else. And up here, you'll notice uh, to balance out the antenna, there's no solar panel on that side. There's only three solar panels. A little bit awkward, but there we are. Anyway, uh, so that is the idea. I think maybe I want to sneak some more electric charge I mean overall it has enough electric charge maybe it'll be all right we haven't really stocked up on batteries I guess I'll put two on just in case so that's the Agena and then we have 
uh, the rocket as we have before, except I unlocked SRBs. More SRBs, like I really want SRBs. But they are at least competitive now compared to in stock when they were actually mathematically useless. But um, I, I was hoping that these would be taller. <laughs> uh, these are supposed to be the Titan style SRBs. This said four segment. Four segment is more like, you know, in my mind, I mean, then this is five segments and five and a half. I don't know how you even do five and a half and seven segment. But anyway, these are a little bit stubby, unfortunately. But they're all we need. In fact, uh, just with them lifting off the ground, uh, we would have enough thrust. But we're lighting the core uh, engines first, the four Merlin 1Bs first, just uh, for safety's sake. So, because we want to know that they do light, right? So, anyway, we will see how this goes. Of course, we're not launching a Kerbal. We're trying to rescue a Kerbal. So, there we are. And let's see if we can manage that. Okay, throttle up. SAS is on. Ignition. And launch. And throttle down. The boosters do gimbal. One compelling aspect to these boosters compared to the stock ones is how long they last. They last a bit longer, as you can tell. Hopefully the nose cone separatrons work properly, too. I didn't put additional separatrons, so... Okay, and throttle up. And separate. Separate. Whoa! Oh no! Oh! Okay, yeah, they don't separate exactly the way I want them to separate. We'll have to work on that. At least they didn't kill the engine. Now the thing is, we've only got 30 days to get the Kerbal over to the moon. Uh, and back, obviously. So we can't wait a whole long time for a uh, lunar opportunity. But we should have plenty of spare Delta V here. Hopefully. Okay, separation and ignition. Honestly, blasting the inner stage is very Titan-esque. We're pretty close to orbit. Uh, but I haven't extended the high gain yet, so let's hurry this up, actually. That's the problem with having all your antennae inside the fairing. Okay, that's orbit. Very lopsided, but, I mean, considering where we're going, not too bad. Okay. Um... Well, the ascending and descending known aren't in the most fortuitous locations. Okay, that'll be render range, so what we need is 1,390 there, 85 there, and then 588 once we get there. So, I mean, then we should have all that. The question is communication. And I could separate off the fairings here first, before decoupling. I suppose that's probably the best thing to do. Okay, and then we can extend the high gain. Actually, this one doesn't need to be extended, so it was probably working it anyway, but nice to have that out. Make sure we have the panels all out. And we could start some science, too. So, for the first time ever, the magnetometer. And photographic image data. Hopefully we're not going to consume too much power. And this charged particle data. We'll get what we can. And we'll even uh, run the site. And uh, we will go ahead and run MITE as well. But a MITE needs to be in polar orbit. I wonder if site needs to be too. But it says running, so... I guess not. We should boost that polar orbit satellite at some point so that it gets the high data. 
Okay, so we've got a plot. And with our range, we should definitely have communication. Heck, even if we have to communicate all the way out to Minmus or whatever, we should have communication. Oh, oh, start burning in a few seconds. Electric charge is diminishing though, because we're running all these experiments. But this engine does recharge. So, Muno 1. Hopefully, we're gonna have a lot of- look at all that coming in, look at all that. Hopefully we'll get it though, I mean, pretty packed. We got extra data room here, and here, and down there, but still, to fill all of it up in a hurry. Let me pause the site data for now. I think I would like to prioritize the magnetometer. And may pause the photograph. Oh, we have one engine malfunction, but we already tested this out. <laughs> the stage is just fine with just one engine. We will be pushing the burn time limit on this because of the other engine being out. Oh, 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 it's falling the node. Just hold there. Okay, that's good enough. I don't know, which one would be quickest? Two days for charged particle data. These things, well, that's why I put them on the Agena. I put them on the Agena because the Agena is going to be sticking out here. And so it can keep transmitting for a long period of time. So, yeah, and we'll probably leave it in sort of a orbit that goes both high and low. It's basically a big science instrument. It's like, not quite a space telescope, but close. I really would rather not do a correction burn with this stage right now, but okay. Oh, both engines failed. Well, nothing we can do with both engines failing. Separation. Those were low quality engines, not high quality engines. This one is a high quality engine. Okay, I uh, forgot to knock off the nose cone. Off that goes. Reorient for the solar panels. Okay, um... Our distance to target is, that's hopefully, oh, closest approach is 10 kilometers. I'll use RCS to fix that. Uh, okay, 3.7 will be fine. Oh, charge? Why would we not be charging? Oh, it's, it's diminishing still. Um, uh-oh. Uh... Really? Okay, stop. Uh, stop. That's waiting. Stop. That's... Well, that's obviously stopped. Uh, that's stopped. Stop. No, uh, we're still not recharging. Oh! Uh, the panels are... facing the other way? Um, okay, sun down. Let's try. Oh, we seem to get more when it's sideways. Though we are recharging in this direction. Well, we're recharging like this. It's probably because of all the transmission stuff. Let me see if we are still recharging with some of the data collection going on. That takes a big chunk, but it might get done. You know, three days, I think we can not, we can pass on that one. And there's no new photographic data. Uh, I think we'll stop the ion too, that's also two days. Okay, 582 meters per second. And this we have lots of ignitions and burn time in theory. 
ignition. Just taking a look at where the close approach distance is going up at this point. If it does, I'll shut it off. Okay, there we go. And we're one hour away from close approach now. Oh, we're discharging. I'll just find some angle that works. That seems to be fine. I'll, I think that's enough charge for me to get the magnetometer going. We didn't really do the transposition and docking of the pod this time. That was unnecessary, even though we have the docking port. But um, refueling this stage is an option because it's got 29 more ignitions and 21 minutes of more burn time. Whereas we're only going to use about 30 seconds more of it. Well, we could throttle down, but you get the picture. Did we pass the closest approach? I thought... Hmm. Okay, well, I think I was talking away or something. At least we didn't trigger the life support thing yet. Okay, 58 meters. I think we'll use the RCS to... And we'll lock the RCS up here temporarily. We'll just use the Agena's RCS to slow down, I think. We found B-Top. She is still alive. Okay, we used a bit of the RCS fuel, but not all of it, thankfully. Okay, I think this should be good enough. We're drifting away. All right, B-Top is a pilot. Good times. Okay, B-Top is in. And now the clock starts, right, for... No, no, uh, maybe I should scooch, ah, uh, scooch that over. That's why I wanted this over where persistent rotation, okay, I'll put it at the bottom. I usually have other stuff at the bottom, but, okay, 40 days, 40 days, 50 days of oxygen. Okay. The question is whether we can get to the moon with our current delta V. Okay, that's pretty equatorial. So let's see, uh, okay, can we flip properly? That's still counterclockwise. That's still counterclockwise. <laughs> no matter what I do, it's counterclockwise. Okay. Eight days. And then over here, let's say we tried to make orbit. That doesn't cost a whole lot. That would be good for the Agena, but then we have to break orbit again, and hopefully our service module is going to have enough, otherwise Kerbal is doomed. Okay, so we'll, we'll go with this and see what happens. Two days out here for B-Top. We seem to be recharging right now. Uh, oh, oh, I passed the burn time. Ah, oh, shucks. And I don't need to use that. Oh, it's following that. Uh, I think that's messed up. The question is, can we still just capture with the Agena, or did my bad time warp skills mean that we can't? It seems like we can still capture with the Agena, so we'll still continue like this. For scanning purposes, we'd rather be in a polar orbit, for, but just for getting the Kerbal back, this is a lot easier. We've got some contracts for satellites around the moon, but that is not what we're going to do right now. I don't think we've done the Kerbal mm -hmm. High Over Kerbin EV report, have we? Okay, EVA report, running. 
Okay, board. Coronal mass ejection. Well, we've got full shielding on this pod. Okay, let's do this burn properly, hopefully. Okay, that's good. And that's a recharging posture. How are our experiments going? Okay, well, let's transmit some more of this. Uh, get that photo stuff going. I guess I'll just flag all of them now. I mainly wanted to make sure the magnetometer stuff got in early. More coronal mass ejection. Double check on our Kerbal supplies, still 33 days. Oh, oh, power. Uh, is that because, no, the sun is out. Moon is over there, we we're just tilted the wrong way. Okay. Okay, we are in Mooner SOI, but the uh, batteries are still charging. Periaps is okay. We'll try and make orbit with the Agena. The Agena will be left doing science around Mooner orbit while the Kerbal goes back home. Hopefully. It occurs to me this isn't the best side to have the periapsis on for this though. Will the Kerbal have enough Delta V? Oh. Suddenly the wrong orientation. Ah, uh, ah, uh, no, no, stop. Oh, okay, well we're not gonna get solar input right now anyway. Um. So let's cease transmissions while we're here. Okay. I'll cut down on the battery usage. And no storage space for that, so it's not running. Okay, so the experiments aren't running. Let's just make sure we're retrograde. Can't see the moon right now. Periapsis is when we'll eventually get some sunlight, I think. Almost empty. I don't know if these generate the electric charge. It doesn't seem to. They usually have some electric charge in them if they do. Oh, we're using much more than I thought we... Oh, it's running. Shoot. Uh, Should have made doubly sure that they weren't actually running since we were in sight of... Kerbin. Oh, we're gonna run out before I can stop it all. Let me see. That does recharge us. Okay, the Agena's out of fuel. Not necessarily a problem, it stars the RCS. Now we've lost power though. Now we're recharging. So, close call, but okay. Um, I wonder about persistent rotation and when we're actually going to be able to orient to the sun and lock it. Hmm. Does something disable persistent rotation? I don't know. It's possible. Okay, this is a pretty high orbit. I might want to bring it down more. Let's see, uh, if we were to try and break orbit right now, which we would have to do from like over here-ish, how much would it cost to get back to Kerbin? You can see the problem here, right? It's going all weird. Okay, that's... It looks like we can get it done like this. Then there's the whole matter of whether the pod can survive re-entry. Okay, given that, and given the fact that we're recharging, we want some EVA reports. Moon space low lowlands. So the Agena will retain its remaining mob propellant in order to dock with a refueler if we get to that. Okay, board. And now that we are recharging, let's continue the experiments and transmissions. Okay, stuff is being sent. 
power is still good. We got 119 science now. Remember how we basically used our last 45 to unlock struts? So this is pretty good. We should be in the sun for a while. Because we're headed to out to our high part of the orbit, and that's all in sunlight. Even the maneuver is in sunlight, so that's good. Let me take a look if we can check out the surface biome. Let me add that to that custom window. Lots of charged particle data. That must be surface biome dependent. I want to get the image data and the ma uh, magnetometer always, but the image data would be good. Okay, well, I'll just let all the science run. And we'll just focus on taking a look at the electric charge, which... I don't know why this angle is the best. I guess it's because of those solar panels. But those on should be okay too. How's our Kerbal's radiation? 5% uh, radiation, 9% stress right now. So, not great, considering we're full up on shielding, but could be worse. Nitrogen is a little bit of a worry. We seem to have used, uh, cause, oh, that's because of the EVAs. I gotta remember that. We EVA'd and so we lost some nitrogen. The initial estimate of how much, you know, it says we have a few years or something. See, it says three years or such, but um, it doesn't mean it. <laughs> it doesn't mean three years. because we'll lose a lot of that during EVAs. Okay, we're gonna reorient the Agena so that it's facing the sun. And then we're gonna decouple from it. Uh, let's go sun down. Because we're coming close to our burn time. So that's fine. And decoupling. Okay, now we have to reorient the other way. And now we're recharging. Make sure the Agena's science is still chugging. Plenty of mod propellant on here. Um, it needs to actually hold sun down. Good. Okay. That's running, that's running, it's waiting, so it's running. Okay, so this is all good and it is now a science satellite. Still transmitting data, but a lot of the data is back in the pod because we have more storage space there. Okay, and ignition. Should have probably picked up and explored a moon contract, shouldn't I have? Or some contract to fly by the moon with a Kerbal. Well, there is not going to be a fly by the moon with a Kerbal, right? Because we already did it with a probe and that didn't distinguish between having a Kerbal and not having a Kerbal. So we're not going to get any special contract for this particular mission. The best we can do is a plant a flag on the moon mission. We'll see if we have the money for that. Probably we'll need to fulfill some more contracts before that, though. I'm gonna go with 26. That's what I used to do in the Kerbin system. I mean, the small or Kerbin system. I don't know if that's a good idea here. Hmm. Well, there's only one way to find out. <laughs> Are we recharging now? And, um... We can't really do might. I, I probably shouldn't have gotten might. All right, uh, let's do another EVA though. Isn't any mod propellant? Huh. I wonder why. This mod propellant in the pod. High over the highlands. Guess the little thrusters use the stuff in the pod first, which would be the opposite of what we want. There's also moon space high notable craters, but 
Apparently we have to go in and come out again if we want those. But, oh, these are locked. All right, I never unlocked these. Okay. We can't transfer fuels yet. We need to unlock that. Um, okay, uh, do another EVA. It seems like there's a new biome here. Ooh, don't shift around too much. EV report. Oh, it doesn't count it as a new EV report. All right. Three days to periapsis. We don't have any data left in here. 10% stress, 7% radiation, 28 days of supplies left. Oh, and let's check the 246 days of nitrogen. So no more EVAing. I think the next EVA would basically take all our, I mean, we won't, we won't have enough nitrogen after that. So 26.5. Again, I don't have any definite number. We're just going to try this. Well, the Agena is still transmitting, da transmitting data. We've got nearly a hundred. Oh, we got no, nearly 155. Okay. Uh, it depleted some of the food water. And I gotta make sure that the flow priority is set properly next time. We want it to deplete from the service module first, of course, but depleted evenly. Okay, orbit normal. Okay, service module separation. Okay, surface negative. I'll arm the parachute now, just in case like B-top loses consciousness or something. We'll also, also roll a little bit to make sure we get... If we can, we can... Oh, that's the wrong side. The other side has the solar panel. We can get some more solar power. I'll turn the RCS on just in case it needs it. Okay, well, there's land below us. And we're in the atmosphere. 5,600 meters per second. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, the service module blew up. We've got an overheating indicator on the heat shield already. Ablating is happening. I swear, if we lose less ablation on this return than we do from the low curve and orbit returns, that's gonna be interesting. But it's sort of on that trajectory right now. Got a lot of G forces as expected. That's why I armed the parachute first. But the G-forces are going down, but it's cumulative, I guess, that little bar. Yeah, it looks like we'll use less ablator on this return from the moon. Take from that what you will. Okay, the parachute has deployed. I'll dump some mod propellant if I can. Oh, it looks like we'll be on land. Okay, touchdown speed should be fine, but I'll just dump the rest of the mod propellant anyway. B-Top's got purple hair, I just noticed. I think B-Top will be a favorite going forward after this mission. Okay, and we're on the ground. Alright, RCS off, and recover. Seeing the loss of Quasati, I, I thought I told it not to warn me about any of that. Oh, and then it tells me immediately signals back. Weird. Okay, we got some funds back. We got B-Top, that's important. We should have fulfilled that contract. B-Top got many ribbons. Dangerous EVA. In, uh, while well, not in a stable orbit. I wonder which not in a stable orbit she EVA'd at. Maybe when we were on our way to the moon. And uh, 
So we've got some satellite contracts, including one for Duna, which, you know, we'll get to it at some point, I suppose. Otherwise, uh, two around the moon and one around Minmus. So we'll probably be launching those next time. Uh, this time, I think this has been a very discreet mission, uh, but an impressive one in a way. And I also don't want to tempt fate because, yeah, I mean, we got through it by the skin of our teeth and I don't want to push my luck. So, yep, BTOP is here and we will see what we do next time, next time. With that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.